You've been a successful employee your whole life. At the age of 56, you decide to start your own business. Thanks to your knowledge, such brands as Audi and Mercedes are developing. But in surprising circumstances, you begin working with Adolf Hitler. World War II disrupts all plans. And you're forced to create weapons for murder and end up in prison. And even here, your knowledge is used to build cars. Only at the age of 73, you fulfill your dream. Create your car, which undoubtedly becomes the best on the market. Your son is the same genius as you and successfully develops the company. You radically change the car market, and many companies have become successful thanks to you. Your name is Ferdinand Porsche, and this is the story of the Porsche Company. Ferdinand Porsche was born on September 3, 1875. Together with his older brother and sister, they lived in the city of Moffersdorf. His father had a workshop and enjoyed great prestige among the townspeople. The Porsche family did not live well and the boy did not have the opportunity to go to school like ordinary children. Therefore, his mother taught her son to write, read, and count independently. Starting at the age of 12, Ferdinand began to work with his father in the workshop. The boy incredibly liked to create something on his own. After some time, he began to go to an evening school which was 10 kilometers from his home. Ferdinand had a problematic relationship with his father due to different interests. The guy liked working with electricity. However, his father was not very impressed. On the contrary, for a long time, he tried to forbid his son from engaging in such nonsense. Therefore, Ferdinand set up his secret workshop in his parents' house to experiment freely. So, at age 15, he created a generator, thanks to which electricity appeared in his house. Considering that until this moment there was only light in the mayor's house, it becomes clear that the boy was very talented. In 1883, Ferdinand moved to live in Vienna and got a job in a small company producing electric motors. At the same time, the young man continues to improve his knowledge, studying at the Imperial Technical University. He soon began working as a designer at Jacob Lohner & Company. It was an excellent opportunity to experiment. So, in 1897, a young engineer developed the world's first step engine after work. A year later, he created his first Lohner Porsche car with electric motors and an incredible speed in those days, 40 kilometers per hour. Ferdinand was recognized as an outstanding engineer and his car deservedly won the Grand Prix of the exhibition and the tests that soon took place at the Semmering Pass were successful. The vehicle designed by Ferdinand won the race. In addition to ongoing experiments, Ferdinand also thought about creating his own family. So at the age of 28, he married Alozia Johanna Kays. The couple had two children, the incredible girl Louise and son Ferdinand who was with his father like two drops of water. After working for Lohner for almost eight years, in 1906, he became the technical director of Austro Daimler. Here, Ferdinand had the opportunity to reveal his talent and translate ideas into reality. In 1910, he designed the Austro Daimler touring car. This dastardly car made an impression in competition with three wins at the Prince Henry trials. To add some coolness, Ferdinand got behind the wheel himself to lead his car to victory. It was a long and challenging test for touring cars. In that year, it was 1,495 kilometers long and stretched from Berlin through Magdeburg, Brunschig, Kassel, Würzburg, Nuremberg, Stuttgart, Strasbourg, and Trier to its terminus in Bad Homburg. Ferdinand developed a top speed of up to 140 km per hour on the track with his new aerodynamic vehicle. In 1922, Ferdinand introduced the Sasha, a small racing car with four cylinders. This car became a legend and went down in the history of racing because it took first place 51 times. Thanks to this success, he was given a responsible task to improve the Mercedes compressor car. The experienced engineer succeeded and the car won prizes in the races. But the truth is that Ferdinand had never created his car. He made all the masterpieces of the industry on the behalf of Daimler. And soon he got tired of it. But the company got ahead of him. 
1928, the Daimler contract was not renewed after the supervisory board demanded a less inventive but more economical, more reliable, and more affordable constructor. It sounds ridiculous that such a company would turn down an inventive genius who had received state awards for his work. In 1931, 56-year-old Ferdinand founded his own design office with his son and 12 close associates. Since the engineer had an excellent reputation, he did not have to look for clients. The companies themselves turned to him. One of them was Auto Union, better known to us as Audi, which wanted to create a racing car. A year later, Porsche developed the Auto Union Type A, which reached speeds of up to 170 miles per hour. It was the first car modeled after what we call today Formula One. After this successful development, Ferdinand received a letter from the USSR with an invitation from Stalin himself. He drove with his son Ferry and was disappointed that so few cars were in the Soviet Union, and if there is, they're just awful. Stalin himself offered for him to become the Minister of the Automotive Industry, but Ferdinand refused and returned to Germany. Soon, he received another letter from representatives of the Czech authorities who offered him Czech citizenship. But this he also refused. Ferdinand did not like such events because he wanted to create cars in his own native country. Then something incredible happens which can hardly be called an ordinary coincidence. Ferdinand dreamed of creating a budget car that anyone could drive. He aimed to make a practical car for families, not a luxury item. At the same time, Adolf Hitler talked about an utterly similar idea, the creation of a people's car. So Hitler turned to Ferdinand with the task of making a car that the whole family of five people could drive and that cost 990 Reichsmarks. The working title of the new project was Volkswagen. In 1935, the first copies appeared for testing, and after several developments occurred, a famous car, the Volkswagen Beetle. By the way, this car was produced until the beginning of the 21st century around the world. Perhaps you're surprised, but Porsche was one of the people who created the world-famous Volkswagen company. The outbreak of the most terrible war in the history of humanity forced Ferdinand to design tanks and armored vehicles. Hitler moved Porsche and his son to build the heavy Tiger tank. He also developed a robust military mount called the Ferdinand, which became deadly on the battlefield. It is also worth remembering his interest in electricity because he set windmills. During World War II, Ferdinand and over 300 workers forcibly created weapons for Hitler. When the war ended, the father and son planned to quietly continue the production of cars. In December of 1945, the French government invited talented engineers to evaluate production at the Renault factories. But it was a mousetrap. Upon arrival, Ferdinand and Ferry were immediately arrested for collaborating with Hitler and exploiting prisoners. Ferry Porsche was released less than a year later and began designing a racing car for Cheese Italia. For this work, he received 1 million francs. With this money, he bought his father out of prison, who had spent almost two years in it. Here, the health of the now 72-year-old engineer deteriorated significantly. The French authorities did not allow doctors to see him. At the same time, they forced him to participate in the development of the Renault or CV family car. While Ferdinand Porsche was in prison, his son did market research and started developing his lightweight sports car. In 1947, the father and his grandson, who was called Ferdinand Alexander Porsche, joined the work. So three generations of Ferdinand Porsche created the first car of their own on June 8, 1948, with the name Porsche 356, which began to be produced in the city of Stuttgart. By the way, on the modern Porsche logo, you can still see the coat of arms of this city. While the original plan was to produce only a modest 500 cars, sales of this model eventually reached a total of 78,000 vehicles. Every day, almost 200 workers manually created cars that actors, magnates, and financiers bought. In the 1950s, nearly 70% of all Porsche cars were exported to interested buyers abroad, and this model has won more than 400 international races. This success allowed the company to expand its plant in 1960, adding a sales department and a service store. 
More than 1,000 factories and office workers helped increase production. Porsche was determined to protect its reputation as a reliable and high-performing manufacturer by entrusting nearly one in five employees with quality control. After such updates, Ferry Porsche decided that he needed to create a new car. Initially, a four-door sedan was planned, but in the end, he decided to settle for a two-seater sports car. Large windows gave the new design a more elegant look, while the air-cooled engine remained located in the car's rear. The unique Porsche 911, with many other additions, was introduced in 1964 at 21,000 Deutschmarks. It was pretty expensive, but despite this, after a few weeks, the car became a bestseller. In 1971, the company's revenue amounted to 900 million Deutschmarks, which led to a dramatic change. Porsche has always been a family business run by Ferdinand's children, Louise and Ferry, but they understood that it would be difficult to cope with such a large company on their own. So two years later, the company went public. Ernst Fuhrmann became the new president of the company. He started doing a lot of research and testing different equipment, but he was not interested in the production of cars. So he stopped the production of the Porsche 911, and because of this mistake, he soon lost his position. The company actively sold its cars in foreign markets, especially in the UK, Switzerland, and Japan. Due to the difficulties of transportation, the prices of cars were shocking. For example, the Porsche 930 Turbo, which sold in Germany for 78,000 Deutschmarks, cost 148,000 Deutschmarks in Japan. Despite this, it was the best period in the company's history. Porsche consistently produced new cars and successfully sold them in Germany and abroad until the early 1990s. Porsche's situation has changed dramatically. Sales have fallen sharply. The cost of cars has doubled. Competitors Mazda and Jaguar have been actively developing, and the company's leaders began to leave. In 1992, Wendelin Wiedeking, an engineer and manufacturing expert, became the new manager to cut costs and increase efficiency. He abolished overtime for the company's employees and convinced most of them to reduce their daily working hours. Wiedeking updated an old version of the Porsche 911 that was no longer current and created a new Boxster two-seat sports car for under $40,000. The new car was an instant success. The entire first year of production was sold out in advance. After three years at a loss, Porsche broke even in 1995 and made a profit in 1996. Another notable change came in 1998, when the company announced a joint venture with Volkswagen and the addition of an SUV to the lineup, the first move away from a sports car. Already in 2002, the first Porsche Cayenne worth $60,000 appeared on sale. The new model became an absolute bestseller. But in 2005, director Wiedeking got fed up with the success and decided to do something new. For example, buy Volkswagen. Why not? It benefited Porsche as they used many parts from Volkswagen cars, and besides, in fact, these companies were created by the same person. So in the same year, the company bought 20% of the well-known concern, gradually increasing its power. In 2008, Porsche already owned 50% of Volkswagen. Then, the global crisis. Companies, banks, and people are in panic. And what about Porsche? It continues to buy shares, owning 71% of Volkswagen. Such actions have created chaos in the market. In one day, Volkswagen's stock price jumped from 200 to 500 per share. The next day, the stock soared to nearly 1,000 a share. For a short time that day, Volkswagen was technically the most valuable company in the world. Porsche was on the verge of completing one of the most daring acquisitions ever. It gained control of 74% of the shares of one of the largest companies in the world, and Porsche could easily completely take over Volkswagen. But none of this happened. Instead, Porsche's plans collapsed like a house of cards over the next few months. Now, we need to go back to understand the essence of the following events. Ferdinand Porsche had a daughter, Louise, who had a son, Ferdinand Piaica. He, like other relatives, owned a share in Porsche. But due to family conflict, he decided not to work in the Porsche business anymore. He started his journey at Audi and later Volkswagen, where he became CEO. 
He managed the company poorly, and his character was reminiscent of Hitler or Vladimir Putin. In 2007, he was supposed to retire, but due to the actions of Porsche, he decided to stay a little longer. Ferdinand waited until the company ran out of money. So, in 2009, Volkswagen acquired Porsche's automotive business for $11.3 billion in cash. What a turn of events! Now, all the companies that the same person essentially founded have become one. The same year, Porsche released the new Panamera, slightly improving the company's financial position. It's a sports car, but full size. It was this car that Ferry Porsche dreamed of creating in 1964, as we see the company manage to finally make his dream a reality. In 2014, the world saw the new Porsche Macan. It is a high-performance, five-door luxury crossover that was based on the Audi Q5. At the moment, this is the cheapest Porsche car. The name Macan means tiger in Indonesian, but the same name had a military tank, which Ferdinand Porsche helped develop. Maybe it's just coincidence. Today, the company produces only six models of fast and luxury cars, among which is the Porsche 911 created in 1964. More than one million of these cars have already been sold worldwide. As they say, the classic never dies. Now the company employs more than 37,000 people who create reliable and expensive cars. Porsche's income is more than 33 billion euros, but it all started with small experiments and big dreams. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to be the first to hear the stories of these legendary companies.